up for just a second. Just stand up. You're like, you thought you were going to sit down. Hold your hands up. Lord, everything we are is about you. God, you are not looking to send one. You're looking to send us all. God, into our families where we'd rather say, send me, Lord, to Nineveh, but not to my family. God, we repent. That's you right now. Repent. You'd rather go with Pastor Bob to the Middle East than to your family. You know I'm preaching it. So I want you to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I forgive my family. No matter what they did to me, they belong to you. And I declare this is the season of breakthrough. Here I am, God. Send me to my family. Send me into my workplace. Send me into this city, in this state, in this nation, to the nations. I'm ready. I'm going. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Would you give him a shout of praise? He is worthy. He's so worthy. You can have a seat. You're like, it's so good to be home. I do not know what is happening to you, but it's good. I'm just so happy to be without a mask on. Praise the Lord. I bless everyone who has a mask on. Don't take offense. I'm just happy. I just get tired of spit getting on the mask. You know what I mean? I'm just tired of it. I am so happy to be home. I, you know, when I am home, I'm very rarely able to get into my home church, which is the Rock of Roseville. So I'm so happy you're online. I'm so happy you're here. And I'm so happy you're here. It's like a Holy Spirit setup right there. We're going to get to you in just a little bit. Hey, church, listen, um, I heard something this morning might not be revelatory for you, uh, but I want you to know that you're on the Lord's heart. So as I was praying this morning, I've been here since 730, uh, recording a message and drinking coffee. <laughs> so look out. It could be, it could be fiery. All right, so, <laughs> all right, we're, we're going to get there. I, I have to laugh because I just, I prayed, oh, Lord, please, would you send your angels? Because we could all use some help. And Kathy leans over to me and goes, John, all these angels just flew in right when I said it. I go, I know. She goes, they were on the roof. I go, I know. I just love that. Do you love it? See, when you run with people who are not afraid to press into God, then they just confirm. Yeah. Or they call you to the carpet like, yeah, that wasn't God. That's good too. So I'm super thrilled that our Agape Freedom Fighters team, will you guys stand up? Thank you for being here. Yeah, we, so blessed. Thank you guys. They're all gonna pray for you at the end. We have our fabulous rock prayer team. I feel like I'm talking a thousand miles an hour because I have a lot to say. All right, here we go. So Rock of Roseville, <clears throat> this is what the Lord said about you this morning. You are an oasis in the middle of a desert. You're providing living water to weary sojourners. And those sojourners, some have never been inside a church. They have never met Jesus. And the Lord says, <clears throat> those who have traveled through every realm of worldly pleasure and found desert sand, they're going to find their way to you. They may not find their way in this door. So listen up, church. Come on. You're the church. Whether you're in your cubicle or driving down the road, you're the church. The Lord's going to provide for you because you're providing for the least of these. So he has recently brought in some new pastors and leaders into the rock. Uh, and that has not been without a great cost. The enemy tried to take a lot of pastors out. But he's brought in the revelatory pastors for this season. So those who have grown weary in leadership, come on. Shake it off. It's a new season and a new time. The Lord has called you the A-team, leaders of the rock. Okay, so I was like, oh, it's A for awesome. It's A for amazing. He goes, no, it's for you, Sean. Some of you think that it's the A for awesome, and I think you're awesome. But the Lord says, no, tell him it's the A-team because you're the alabaster box. Oh, my goodness. Okay. This happened at 5 this morning, so... I'm just letting you know. He says, all of you in this leadership team here, 
You are extravagantly pouring out your lives over and over. Bob, you know, you should be retired, dude. I get it, <laughs> but you're not. You're going, going to the darkest regions of the earth because you're the alabaster box. Brandon, people who faced what you faced would have just gone, screw it, I'm out. But you let this holy moment happen. You continue to press it. I'm so proud of you. You are the alabaster box. You have been crushed, but not abandoned. And the Lord says, church, you are all rising out of the ashes of COVID and there's beauty on your lives right now. You need to get ready. You need to get ready because the Lord is about to blow you up. I'm not kidding. You think I'm about hype. If you know me, you know I am not about hype. I'm a total realist. I'm sometimes like annoying, I can believe it. But listen, I am all about what God's all about and I am seeing him do things right now. You know, I, 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 every time I'm here, you guys are here, which I just love. I'm, I'm texting with my Indian pastors and they're like, you know, as soon as this thing blows over, I go, I'm there. Send me, Lord, send our teams. I want to go wherever, whatever zip code doesn't know Jesus, send me there. I don't care. But in the meantime, the Lord is sending us to some zip codes where they have a wrong ideology about Jesus. On, yeah. Oklahoma, <laughs> Pennsylvania. The Lord is sending us to places I have no idea, but I'm going to tell you right now, revival is about to break out in Oklahoma. I'm going to Oklahoma five times this year. What is happening in Oklahoma? But I see the Lord doing new things. This is what my friend, my new friend, Minister Twyla Brown, she says, Joe Moody, she calls me Joe Mama. So now that's it, isn't it? Don't call me that, no, just don't. She goes, oh, listen to me, Joe Mama. She goes, sometimes you just gotta tell the enemy, you just gotta draw a line in the sand like this. That's what she does. She goes, enemy's not coming in my house anymore. And she does it with the whole thing, you know? I can't do that, because I'm just. You gotta draw a line, people. This is the time. Twyla Brown taught me that we are in an unprecedented time. She's faced all kinds of persecution, but she keeps on running. She, and she leaves me these messages. Girl, I'm running and gunning today. And then she goes, for you, that means I'm driving around and I'm praying. <laughs> She's so cute. The Lord has not forgotten his promises to you. I just spoke over Aaron. I know Aaron has a call of his life, certainly in the States, but in Germany. And uh, he had his dreams sort of, pfft. he thought they were stopped because he was at YWAM in Kona, had a call to go to Germany, COVID happened, got sent home, thought, I'm driving for Amazon. I said, praise God, you're driving for Amazon. He talks to the Lord all day long. I just told him upstairs, he prays over packages and leaves them on the door. Hey, revival can come through Amazon. Sorry, just saying. Because Aaron's in the car and he's praying. Over those packages. But I just told him. <laughs> you all want to get a package from Aaron now, don't you? You're all like, man, send Aaron to my house. <laughs> Listen, I was on a call a couple of days ago with some German, German pastors. And Aaron's face just came in front of me. And I go, hey. And in the moment that Aaron's face comes to, across my mind, they say to me, hey, do you know people in YWAM Kona? Hmm. Yes, I do. And they said, do you know Paul Childress? Mm -hmm, I do. Yeah. And they start talking how he's coming there. And I go, oh, that's interesting. I said, one of my spiritual sons is called to Germany. And they said, really? Where to? I go, I don't know. It's a city with a B. They go, our city's with a B. I go, well, imagine that. <laughs> how interesting. So the Lord said, okay, that's enough. Now you can pray for him. So we prayed for Aaron and we, and we prayed for Amanda. And they said, we need him. We heard Americans were coming. I said, oh, they're coming. All right. I said, but when this one comes, the whole city's going to know it. So I just pray in the name of Jesus, Aaron, that in this season, yeah, come up here. I don't know what I'm doing. I have a message. I'm going to, maybe I'll do it. I don't really know. Yeah. Stretch out your hands. Yeah. Hey, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this one. God, I thank you that there is no delay in the kingdom right now. 
Hey, come Holy Spirit. Every place that's tried to take you down, every thought that's tried to take you down, Aaron, everything that said you missed it or somehow you didn't hear right, in the name of Jesus, I break those lies and I say, this is the time and for such a time as this, you've been called and the anointing power of God is upon you and you are gonna bring the good news to the captives of Germany, those who are captive in religion. You're gonna bring the fresh revelation of God and this ability to hear and to see in the spirit realm has only just begun, Aaron. And the Lord said, what I started when you were 15, I am going to double that anointing. So we just say, Holy Spirit, come in Jesus name, come in Jesus name. And your newborn baby, when this baby is born, the Lord said, then I will begin to release you. I will begin to release you. So father, I thank you right now that you withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. So I thank you the way that you have blessed his life to hear you, God, that he is going to bless thousands and thousands and thousands of sons and daughters to do the same. And it won't be when you're 40, Aaron. It will be before you are 30. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, God. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Woo, come on, somebody. Okay, wow, it's 11 o'clock. Who knew? Don't look at your watch. So I was up here recording and the Lord said, don't give the message you were going to give. I used to say, I worked so hard on that. Now I say, okay, whatever you want. What do you want to do? He goes, I want to talk about the next generation. I'm all, let's do that. So I have no idea how that's going to roll, but I'm so thankful to Nick, who's Mr. Flexible. Thank you, Nick, for being so flexible. I sent him boatloads of scripture a couple days ago. And then I go, yeah, we're not using that. <laughs> so Sorry. Apologies. He loaded it all, got it ready to go, and now it's, we're not using that. So here we go. You ready? Okay, I believe there is an urgency in this time. How many of you feel that? All right, come on. We have got to get this. Prayer, meditation, worship in the word, encountering his presence because he's teaching us something new. Open your Bibles, Isaiah 43, 16 through 21. I'm actually... Thank you, Nick. God bless you. He got this in. He had to double check with me because he thought I said something else. And he goes, man, that's a heavy passage. I go, what? <laughs> good thing we checked at the front door. So it's all good. All right. This is the message version of Isaiah 43 verses 16 through 21. This is what the Lord says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through the pounding waves, the God who summons horses and chariots and armies, they lie down and then can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what happened. It's a word. Forget about what happened. Forget about the past. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, river in the badlands. Wild animals will even say thank you. The coyotes and the buzzards. Because I've provided water in the deserts, rivers through the sun-baked earth, drinking water for the people I chose, the people I made especially for myself, a people custom made. You're custom made to praise him. You're custom made. So during this past year, I don't know about you, but... A lot of us have been swimming in some difficulty. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, just a little up to your neck. And for some of it, it's the driest season of, the, of your life, yes. right? For some. But for others, they're like, man, this was good. I had a break. For me, I was like, I can't travel. Uh oh. Better be careful. Where's my identity? Is my identity in my traveling? Is my identity up here? Heck no. My identity's face down in awe of God. So I spent a lot of time doing that. And then we would plan and plan and plan like we always do. Map out six months, map out a year, map out two years, and then everybody gets canceled. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, look at that. So now people are like, hey, can you come to someone? I go, no, I'm not planning anything. I'm not. Because the Lord said to me, two months into COVID, launch an online school. What? I, I, I'm not going to do that right now, Lord. He goes, well, I am. You can come along. <laughs> oh. Okay, that sounds like a lot of work. Yes, it is, but I'm doing that. So we did. And about three months ago, I was in Brazil, um, and they said to me, Joe, we've never met anyone like you. And I was like, well, 
that's probably good, you know? <laughs> they said, the way you teach about family, the way you teach about unity, the way you teach about teams, the way you teach about leadership, we need that. And we're going to dump our three-year Bible school and we're going to adopt yours. Wow. And I said, what? I understand what God is doing. It's a new thing. This is a Baptist church with a network of 900 churches. Wow. We are launching this school. I don't tell you this with any arrogance. I tell you this because it scares me to death. I don't want to err in the word of God. I want to raise up sons and daughters who just take over. I don't want to be in charge. I don't want to be in control. I want to see you rise to your full potential in Christ and see you go into your workplaces and blow people up with love. I want to see a move of God here. And it's going to happen if we stop thinking we're on the sidelines. We got to draw fresh inspiration and look at what the Lord promised to the Israelites who were still in Babylonian captivity. He's promising them things and they're like, really? Be alert, be present. I'm about to do something new. And, and through this Isaiah 43 passage in 19 through 21, it foretells of the same miracles of the Lord that the Israelites experienced in the first Exodus when God's people were free from Egyptian captivity. So the Lord is even saying, look, I did it before. I can do it again. Where in your life has God done something? He can do it again. Can I tell you? I had so much angst in my family because my son's a prodigal. And, and I've said that on this platform before. My son is the love of my life besides my husband. But man, he's the biggest pain because he's so much like me. My husband goes, oh boy, you too. But two weeks ago, I came back from Atlanta. I was hanging out with Maverick City. Some of you know their worship. I'm gonna tell you, pay attention to those people. Not because their worship is great, but because their hearts are great. They've broken every denominational barrier, every racial barrier, every socioeconomic barrier, because they just simply wanna be with God. That's it, period, the end. I was with hundreds and hundreds of them. I was with their major leaders for days having meetings because we're gonna put on music festivals around the world that will take down Burning Man. So. Yeah, listen, <laughs> it's a new thing. It's pretty, pretty daunting. The Lord says, I want to take down Burning Man. I'm like, great, Lord. I hope you find those people. <laughs> He's like, get over here. I'm like, what? How's that going to work? The Lord is doing this, this thing that, that we have to pay attention to in the now moment, in the now moment, in the now moment. There's something unlocking everywhere. So I just come back from Atlanta and I walk in my house and uh, the Lord goes, I'm going to do something this week. And I go, oh man, you've just been doing something for like four days in Atlanta. I'm really tired. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I, in the morning I, I get up, I pray and my son, my son's uh, girlfriend comes over and just a, a really quick story. Um, anyway, she was born with a heart defect, a very major heart defect, had open heart surgery when she was nine. And uh, I didn't know because I'd been traveling. She had been wired with an EKG for, for 48 hours. She was having all kinds of problems. And uh, the Lord said, why don't you knock on your son's door? They're both working in there uh, and see if you can pray for her. And I'm like, oh boy, oh. send me to Nineveh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of felt like that in the moment. You know what I mean? Because my son, you're going to pray. So I came in. I'm all, hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, is your heart okay? No. And she pulls down, shows the wires. I go, hey. So I look at my son, can I pray for you? My son goes, wow, I would like that, mom. Victory, I'm in the door. <laughs> okay, we're here. And then I put my hand on her. Now I just came out of the fire of Maverick City for four days, all right? So like, I'm pretty much roasting. Like, so I put my hand on her and I had a lot of faith because I just came out of an environment where all those people were their age and they were on fire for Jesus. And I'm like, if they're on fire, then my son and his girlfriend are gonna be on fire! I don't care what it looks like. Start declaring that over your prodigals. I say, come Holy Spirit, and boom. I can feel her heart doing the slopey, weird thing. Boom, 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 tsh, boom, 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 tsh. It's really weird. And the minute I go, come Holy Spirit, her heart goes, boom. And then it goes, boom, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus! Okay, listen. 
Yesterday, she tells me, Joe, I got all my tests back. I did a stress test. My doctor doesn't even know what happened because I don't know. I don't have anything wrong with my heart. Like they can't find any trace of what I had. And my doctor calls me every week and wants me to keep coming back because she can't. She goes, she's British. Darling, what happened to you? It's amazing. And she goes, I told her you prayed for me. I told her it was God. But here's what happened in the middle of that prayer. She burst into tears when her heart went boom and it started beating normally. She said, I felt this before. And I said, what? And she said, when I was nine, I died on the operating table and I felt this same feeling. What is this? I said, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Come on. There are deposits that have been made in people's lives all over the place in front of you. And when you just step forward and pray for them, all of a sudden there's a, I know this. Isaiah 42, nine says the former things have taken place. The new things I declare before they spring into being, I announce them to you. He announces them to you going, Hey, you want to come along? This is what I'm doing. And we go, nah, nah, I'm waiting for the old stuff. We're not going back. We're going forward. There is so much I want to say to you, but, but I'm just going to jump to the stream because I'm going to run out of time. Okay. Listen, I was recently at, at Global Supernatural Schools in Pennsylvania, and I, I have the privilege of, of teaching in Randy Clark School. I don't take that lightly. I love that camp. Because if it wasn't for that camp and all that they've done, I would not be standing before you a completely healed miracle. I wouldn't have this freedom I have and the restoration of my life, my family. I wouldn't have it because they paid the price. So I got to go free. So I want to give anything I can back to them. And so I was teaching there. And on the Friday, when I went into to worship and then we were going to, it was my last day of teaching. I was there for, for the week. And the power of the Lord came rolling into worship. And I was like, what's happening in here? It's like, I, I mean, it's the Lord just comes in his holiness, doesn't he? And there and there is something else that happens. Like in that moment, and, and the pastors that were up front running, they were like this to me and to Justin Allen, who was there teaching first year. I was teaching second year. And I come up to the front and Justin, and we, we, we go back and forth with releasing words and doing things. And then all of a sudden, I felt Jesus walk in the room. That, has not, that maybe has happened to me four times in my life. And I hit my knees and I fell face down. And the Lord said, get the microphone and I want you to sing holy, holy, holy. And that's it. And I laid on the floor and I, I was just shaking under the power of God. And I, I just sang holy, holy, holy. And nobody could get up. Everybody was face down. And then I had this weird thought. Somebody needs to sing in Hebrew. What a weird thing. Like it just came, I was like, what? I don't know any Hebrew. Like I know the names of God, but that's not, somebody needs to sing in that. And as soon as I came into unity with that thought, the worship leader, who's the last one standing, everyone else on the stage is flat out. The worship leader starts singing in Hebrew. I'm like, Lord, what are you doing right now? I'm like, God. Oh. He said, I have ripped the veil. I have given you the ability to release heaven on earth. This is the kingdom of light advancing through this darkest hour. How do you think it's going to come? It needs to be darker than dark pitch black so that you are like an inferno in your neighborhood. We just want everything to go away. Now let's go back to normal. No, because we're not an apathetic people. So I am thinking to myself, I'm not going to teach today. And the Lord said, I don't actually care about that. I'm like, clearly. <laughs> After everything was done, five hours, this went on. Holiness. Justin Allen says to me, the Lord told me this morning I wasn't going to teach. I go, well, aren't you more holy than me? I didn't get that memo. <laughs> I'm just messing with me. He goes, isn't it weird that God is doing these crazy things? I was told by the school director who's a good friend of mine, they've never seen that happen in that school. Never. I don't know, 17, 18 years now? 
Never seen that. Be prepared. You're going to start seeing things you've never seen before because God is after a generation. Do you understand the millennial generation? A lot of your pastors are millennials, but then we have a, a generation called Generation Z, right? Generation Zs. We have some Zs and some Alphas in here. Alpha Gen are under 12. Generation Z is the first generation to be raised entirely in the digital age. They are 27% of the population. They are the largest population ever in history. And even marketing strategists are changing the way they sell things because of that generation. Why church do we expect to do ordinary church and think we're going to get to them? It's not going to happen. There is a new thing that is happening right now. Their two major values are to belong and to have influence. So our old paradigm of, you know, sit here on that row till you're 42. And when you're 42, you might have something to say to add to the body of Christ. It's not going to work. They see influence as value. So how are we going to do that church? We need to be on our faces. We need to be praying. The thing that's different between millennials have that same two values, but millennials have optimism. Gen Z does not. Why are we seeing anxiety? Anxiety disorder, suicides, because they don't have the optimism that millennials have. They need community. If the retailers are getting it, church, we got to get it. They want to belong in a family. The rock is a family. I know that. But we got to be an even tighter family, unified by the spirit of God in this hour so that they come into our family feeling safe. Yes. Even if they just came out of addictions, even if they just came out of the, the occult, you guys yeah. hose them off with love yeah. and hug them a bunch yeah. Yeah. and watch what happens and then give them a chance to speak while they're learning. Yeah. They need to be able to express themselves. So let me finish up with this. Um, gosh, Lord. Woo. Okay. After that crazy week at GSSM, so many things happened. I could tell you, I, I've never seen God do. At one point he said, get all the leaders of the school. I'm like, well, they're busy. They're doing work. You know, Lord goes, I don't care. So I send runners, go get all the leaders. They come in the room. I go, Hey, students, get up. They're used to my bossiness. Get up in the name of Jesus. Get up. Get up. They get up. <laughs> And we all put our hands out toward the leaders and the fire of God just smashes them and they all go forward on their face and they didn't do any work for about two or three hours. It was so good. But then the Lord just said, worship me. That was another day. Worship them. And then every single one of those students got the most accurate prophetic word of their life from all the other students because there was an activation happening. It wasn't about me. It was about all of us. It was about the unified bride that was doing something new. So after this week of, of craziness, I get on the airplane. Now, I don't normally remember dreams on airplanes, but when I do, I know that there's something. So here's the dream. I fall asleep. I wake up in 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh boy, that was nuts right there. So I write it all down. So in the dream, I'm with a small group of what I knew to be spiritual mothers and fathers. And these mothers and fathers have a deep, deep passion to reach the next generation for Jesus. And we're on somehow what I know to be a lower level earth. So I know it's the earth, but it's super, super dark. And it feels full of lust and crime. And it's just like, yeah. And I said to the Lord, I, I want to be here. And he goes, no, I want you to get my watches back from the foxes. Okay, so some of you are like, you're weird. Okay, wait. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So I was like, get the watches back from the foxes. That's weird. Okay, I'm going to do it. So everybody seems to be like, yeah, well, we're in. That's not weird. In the dream, it's not weird at all. So all of us scatter all over this region. And, and I see these foxes, they're everywhere. And they have big gold, heavy gold watches strapped on their back. And one falls in a hole. I think that's the Lord's mercy on me, you know just so I could catch one and feel victorious. So I catch one, I pull the watch off and I'm like, aha. And I go, what do you want me to do with this thing? Cause I can't kill animals. I'm not, he goes, just let it go. I let it go. And this just goes on and on and on. And then we all 
somehow know after we've gotten all these watches back and they're heavy, like weightiness, weighty, solid gold. We get to this ladder and the ladder's like, uh, you know, New York fire escape type ladder, right? You pull it up, yank it down. It's one of those, but it's huge. And the Lord said, it's <laughs> powder coated. It's indestructible. Powder coated paint, like it's indestructible. It's like some supernatural in this low land of slime. It can't, this ladder that goes up to take these watches back. There's nothing that's going to prohibit that. So standing at this ladder, I want you to know <clears throat> it's the wildest thing. The gold, just let me summarize this. I could give you all the scriptures. If you think this is weird, you can uh, tell Pastor Brandon and then he'll message me. I'm just joking. <laughs> you can message me. There's, I'm all over social media <clears throat> and I'll give you the scriptures. There are, everything is lined up with the word of God. I just... Oh, there you go. We'll post them online. Okay, perfect. So the gold, the weightiness of God, the kabod or the kabod of God is the weightiness of his glory. So that's what God is talking about, about these watches. He's asking us to go back and get his glory back from a generation where it's been robbed. The foxes. Do you know Song of Solomon? The foxes raid the vineyards. They kill the livestock. They kill everything that's growing. This is a time of the great harvest and we got foxes running amok in this generation. Addictions, suicide, depression. These foxes are taking the glory that belongs on this generation. So as we are in this, uh, the ladder, I want you to know the ladder is the cross of Christ. I'll put those scriptures online for you so you can see this. It's just nuts, you guys. Don't think when you have these kind of dreams, it's like, oh boy, I ate a burrito. It's not <laughs> telling you. God's trying to tell you something new. So the scriptures that talk about that, it also talks about the latter means Christ himself and the entry into the supernatural world. What is robbing our kids? It's the supernatural world of darkness that's hooking them in because they're not seeing the lightness of Christ and the supernatural of the Holy Spirit in the church. They need to see it on you. Listen, the latter is also salvation in Christ. John 12, 30 through 33, quickly, the message says, Jesus said, the voice didn't come for me, but for you. At this moment, the world is in crisis. Now Satan, the ruler of this world will be thrown out. And I, as I am lifted up from the earth, will attract everyone to me and gather them around me. He put it in this way to show how he was going to be put to death. He was put to death so we could free them. In the dream, there were two angels standing there. You're going to think this is weird. Some of you are already there. There was an angel on the left and it seemed to be masculine. Its name was Carl. <laughs> I, I ask because I know names mean something. In the Bible, read the angels' names. What are they doing? They always mean what God is doing. The other angel's name was Donna. Okay, listen, church. Carl means free man. Donna means woman ruler who earns respect. What? Do you get it? God has sent his holy angels concerning a generation. And if we are going to reach them, we have to be people of authenticity, transparency, humility, and wear joy. That's what attracts them. So I am going to do uh, this. I'm 10 minutes late. If you have kids, I want you to go get them and get them quick. I want to invite uh, the worship team up. Oh, thank you so much. Hi. Uh, some people are so on top of it. That would not be me. Uh, I'm going to ask our Agape team to come up here to the front and our beautiful rock prayer team. Um, here's what I'm going to do, guys. I know we didn't get to get into enough of the scripture, but you understand what the call is. This is a prayer time right now of impartation. We need to reach a generation for Jesus and we're not gonna do it with religiousness. We're not gonna do it in the constraints of our church. We're going to do it with love, family, connection, and give them a voice. So if you have kids, go and grab them real quick. And if you are in the Warriors, you are middle school, you are high school. 
You are in elementary school. What I want you to do is fill in this space in front of our prayer team. I know it's a little squish there. Somebody pick up Brandon's backpack and put it on the chair there. Thank you, Aaron, honey. Yeah. Oh yeah, do it, do it. Go, Travis. Yes. Hello, check. Am I on? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes, so if you, literally right now, if you have kids, uh, the, the workers are ready to release your kids. They know that they're, we're trying to do this quick. So really go get your kids right now and bring them back in here. Yeah, everybody get up. Okay, I promise you, you're not gonna miss this if you go get your kids real quick. We need the kids in here. This is a time for us as a church family to bless this generation. Even if you've never been in this church before, we call you family, we call you blessed, we call you chosen. And young man with the long hair and the beard against the wall right there, the Lord chose you from the beginning, the foundations of the earth. The Lord calls you a Simeon. And you need to look up who Simeon was in the Bible. Simeon was the man who saw Jesus as a baby and he recognized him. The Lord says he has given you a prophetic gifting and the enemy tried to rob you of everything. And in this season, you've landed in a safe house and the Lord calls you chosen and blessed. And he's gonna show you so many things about Jesus and you are gonna reach the captives and set them free. So I bless your life. I bless your life. And actually, I don't know what your name is, but can you come down here and can you stand in front of Aaron? Cody, come, come on down, Cody. Aaron, I just want you to put your hands on him as we're, we're gonna do the impartation. Okay, any children in here? I don't care if you're babies. Have your parents bring you down to the front. I know it's kind of crowded, guys, but, but this, is, this is the family, right? Lord Jesus, I thank you right now. Church, you're not looking as a bystander. You're the church. Be alert, be present right now. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you for your wisdom, God. I thank you, Father, for your revelation. I thank you, Lord, that you have chosen this generation to save the world. That you said, look up, look up, my people. The fields are white with harvest but you're gonna use the millennials, the Gen Zers, the Alpha Gen to go out and get the harvest with the mothers and fathers like me, championing them. So Holy Spirit, come in this place. Close your eyes, reach up your hands. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We just pray right now. Lord, let there be the beginning right now of a release of your angels, your angels, God your angels to bring impartation for this generation, God. So Agape team, Rock Prayer team, I'm gonna release you just to touch the lives of these children in front of you. And if you have children around you, church, if you feel the spirit moving on you, I just want you to get out of your row and come down here and lay your hands. Please don't push people. The spirit of God moves like a breath. He doesn't need you to push people and you're not more holy if you fall down. Thank you, Holy Spirit, just don't resist him. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing right now. We commission you, mighty, mighty, mighty warriors of the Spirit. We commission you and we say, Spirit of God, fall. Hey, 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 Spirit of God, fall. Just let him feel you, let him feel you, let him feel you, right there, right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, more, feel, 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 feel. Sean, I'm gonna bring all these up here. Can I, can you do that? Yeah. You. Okay, come guys. I want you to stand right here. Just do this right here, right here, right here. Yeah, come forward a little bit. Okay. There you go. Right there. Right there. Yeah, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Okay. Brandon. I'm Brandon. Sean, can you come up? So Holy Spirit, I thank you right now. Can you guys put your hands out like this? Okay, we're just gonna come by and touch you. So whoever is around you, and if you're online, church, listen to me, if you have kids around you in your house, Holy Spirit, 
is in your home because he's in you. Put your hands on your children and bless them. Bless them. Father, I thank you right now for each one of these amazing, amazing ones. Born for such a time as this, God. I thank you that you have no junior Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for the fire that's within them. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would anoint them right now. Just close your eyes. All of you guys, just close your eyes and focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill him, fill him, fill him. Thank you, Lord, right now. We just pray a fresh filling. Spirit of God, come. More, Lord. Fill, 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 fill. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Unlock this five-fold ministry, the gift of teaching. Come. More, Lord. More, Lord. There it is. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? More, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless what you're doing in the room right now, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you're walking through the room and touching hearts and moving like fire on these kids, moving and turning them, God, from worthless things into your kingdom, God. Let it come. Let it come. Fill their hearts till they're bursting with your love, Father. Thank you, Lord. Fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. Thank you, Lord. And guys, whatever words you have over them, I want you to just release those words. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More. Fill them, fill them. Thank you, Lord. Can you feel that? Okay, put your hands up like this. Spirit break out. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the healing gift. Right now, release it right now. Release it right now. Lay your hands on people that are well. Thank you, Father. Can you feel it? Can you feel it in my your heart? You're so good, Lord. Things go to the root when you walk when you into see the room. Sick, you just say, Can I pray for you? Can you put your hand Everything up? Everything changes. Well, you're gonna get well. And darkness starts to tremble Thank at the light you. that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more well, than you, just Holy Spirit, to sit for pouring here out at this your morning. feet. And worship you. God, we thank you for a fresh revelation for each of us on how to reach those around us. We worship you. Lord, to captivate a generation with love, to set the prisoners free from the bondage of addiction, God. And the enslavement to the culture, we thank you, Father. If you're sick today, I want you to put your hand on your own head. Just feel the Spirit of God in here to heal right now. If you are ill and you've been suffering, Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your healing power over your sons and daughters. Father, we command all back pain. Whoever's got that shoulder clicking dysfunction in the name of Jesus, we command that shoulder to be healed in Jesus' name. Brand new cartilage. Whoever's got the left hip issue, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to that left hip and we command it to be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for what you're doing right now. Holy Spirit, we say an end to autoimmune dysfunction, lupus, chronic fatigue syndrome, thyroiditis. Father, in Jesus' name, we say right that autoimmune deficiency in Jesus' name. Whoever's got the gut issues, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, whoever's got chronic problems with digestion, put your hand on your belly, Father, in Jesus' name, we command all dysfunction of the gut floor right now to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Jesus.